am Mark and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. Well, the idea today is we're going to talk about at the viewer's request, by the way, uh, Toby Lynn, thanks. And, uh, but the idea today is we're going to talk about Harry and his mother, Princess Diana. But for some reason, I've had a real strong um, urge to talk about uh, the late uh, Queen. So it'll be those three. So the Queen, uh, Diana, and Harry. And I hope you like the video. If you like the video, please do like the video. And if you haven't uh, subscribed, you know, subscribe. And thank you very much for watching. All right, so we're going to jump into it. We're going to get to the Queen, Diana, and Harry. But as it relates to this feud in the uh, royal family uh, with, uh, with Charles and his brother. So let's see how that goes. Uh, I love this deck. And remember, uh, I'll talk more about this at the end of the video if you want to know uh, some more about these cards. One interesting thing is that they have, uh, besides the regular... Uh, 78 cards of a, um, of a typical deck. They also have some, I don't know how to describe them, probably in the book it tells you about, but I've forgotten how they describe them in the book because I haven't read the instructions in a long time. But it has these uh, separate cards that are almost like oracle cards and they have interesting uh, titles to them. Beatitude, Polarity, uh, Magic Flute, uh, Betrayal, Pilgrimage. So I thought what I'd do is uh, pull a few of these cards just to see for those three entities, uh, the late Queen, the late Princess of Wales, and um, and Harry, if there's any guidance in these kind of oracle-y kind of cards. And then, of course, these are the regular uh, cards. And I'm going to shuffle them up a bit because uh, I haven't opened this uh, deck in a while. I think it's been a while since I've used these cards for any video. If you're, if you're a long-time viewer, uh, maybe you remember when I've used them. So, but yeah, um, a viewer asked about uh, Harry and Diana, but for some reason, I just got a real strong um, pull to um, talk about uh, the late queen. So we will include uh, those three in this video. But before we do any of that, Let's have uh, just a moment of meditation. So we'll have to see. <laughs> I'm not going to cut that out. And uh, thank you, because I'm sure somebody said bless you. That's the kind of nice folks you are. Now my eyes are all watery and I won't be able to see. But, um, so yeah, the queen, the late queen. You know, once we're gone, uh, we probably retain something of, uh, if you want to call it personality, but I don't think all these gripes and these uh, things that troubled us uh, when we were mortal <clears throat> carry through. You know, if you've got a grudge, I don't think you carry that through to um, another. Uh, uh, the soul is what I think keep, takes that on. Not to say it forgets it, but, you know, there's not going to be revenge expressed or or any sort of a petty will expressed by someone who's passed over that's just how i feel or maybe that's just the relationship i have but um we'll see how this goes so let's get oh i forgot i almost forgot i wanted to use these cool kind of oracle cards so let's shuffle them up a bit i think what i'll do is i'll try to remember to pull a couple of oracle cards before the read for each of these uh, folks. So I can't do it like that because uh, we can see what they are. 
So let's see, let's do uh, uh, two Oracle cards for the late queen. And see what kind of direction these lead us in. Pilgrimage. Ah, and this one is Jin. Uh, like like the genie, the blue gin, uh, J-I-N-N. -N. For me, it almost is representative of death just because of the, the um, you know, the illustration here and these goblets which are filled with, I mean, could be wine, could be blood, I don't know, but it's, it's an ominous card. So I'm going to say it's not a happy card, but for me, what this is telling me is that that queen is part of a long pilgrimage and you know the last video i did we talked about the um problems that royal brothers have had over the ages and i wonder if this isn't what this is indicative of is that her uh journey um is still uh going on maybe towards another incarnation eventually but uh and then the gin i don't know just for me verifies that we're talking about a, a, a dead queen um so maybe that's all i'm going to get out of that but you know what, I'll leave them, where will I leave these? I'll leave them here, hopefully you can see them, and uh, see if it influences the rest of the read. But the uh, Queen Elizabeth II, uh, what um, influence, if any, uh, does she have with all of this? I mean, in our mortal selves, we would want to think, oh, she's up there trying to heal uh, this and push him in the right direction. That's what we want to think, but um, we don't really know what the journey um, that these uh, that Harry is on uh, is about. And uh, now she does. So uh, what we think maybe the uh, the influence we should be getting from beyond uh, maybe something different uh, than what. Uh, um, it was really happening and really needs to happen. So the queen as it regards to Harry. The late queen in present time. Oh, these two cards came out, so I'll keep them up. I'm just going to do six right now. Um, as it regards to Harry. Four, five, six. Does the late queen have something uh, that, that we're able to learn? Um about this situation. So, the Hermit card. A Hermit is a time for reflection, and this is the signifier of this reading, the, the central heart of the reading, really. So the Hermit card represents a, a time for reflection, for careful consideration before you're uh, moving forward. And um, so, that certainly seems to be where uh, the king, current king, the uh, Prince of Wales, current Prince of Wales, are. Okay, so we have to remember this would be um, information for someone who is still on her journey as a monarch. And, um, and so the signifier of this is that what's required here, uh, and that we might not understand, is this cautious cautiousness. Uh, the challenge to that then, well, is of course the uh, king and, uh, but look at this. Who is this the king of? Because he's got, he's the king of pentacles. That's the prominent um, uh, addition to this uh, picture here. So the king of pentacles. So the challenge to um, making a move forward is being, uh, guarding your own value as the king. This is directly to Charles. So the challenge is his mortal grip on his identity, I think. The basis of all of this then is, look at this, the queen of coins. The basis of this, I wonder if Camilla has some sort of an influence. I'm sure she has an influence. What I mean, do I think she has an influence? Of course she has an influence. But is it an influence for uh, bringing this family back together or is it an influence for pandering to the wishes of the king. Um, in the past of this is the five of coins and that's being left out in the cold. So one, two, three, four, and where's the fifth one? Right here, up on this plinth. So the five of coins in the past of this is being left out in the cold. This is directly speaking to uh, King Charles III. 
So he had been out in the cold, but now he's the center of attention. I've got an extra card here. In the sky of this is the devil being tied to lesser intention. You know what? I think this is this is where the um, the uh, knowledge uh, of uh, the queen and her current uh, condition comes through. Because what's in the sky of this is the king's king being tied to lesser intention, being tied to the thought of his value, and I think it's his personal value, and uh, being influenced by the queen. And uh, the likely outcome, oh, I don't have an extra card, is um, this page of swords. So the likely outcome is, he, is that um, the truth, swords, comes in with only a suggestion, only the um, authority of a page, of a messenger to the court. And, um, and if we take in more of the scene here, we can see that it's an emotional journey because we're looking at a river right here, but it's pretty much, you know, it's not clear. It's a difficult path, I think. And then it gets dark after that. So it looks like that is the path to go into the tunnel. So the likely outcome for all of this is that now this is, yeah, this makes sense now. This is the king's journey now, okay? Uh, this tells us, this gives us a, a, a guidance for all the characters that we're going to talk about this reading. And for um, the queen, uh, her journey does continue in death. For the king, uh, his journey is just beginning and inevitable end is near and he still hasn't let go of his um, uh, mortal um, uh, shackle of the, of the value of him and not just the value of the monarchy, even though it may seem that way, being tied to lesser intention. And when it's all said and done, there will be progress made, but just, you know, in the amount of a page, it won't be a king's progress. So the queen is not there to guide these people at all. She's not there. These folks' souls uh, should be at, I'm going to leave, no, I'm going to take these back. These folks' souls should be at the point to where um, they're on their journey. And uh, they're not going to be influenced um, left, right, uh, or center by another soul who's also, as a matter of fact, still on their journey. So that's the queen's involvement in this. But let's see if, if a mother's, um, and because the queen is certainly the mother of Charles, but let's see if, if Diana, because we want to think of her as very empathetic and looking over uh, those sons, but we'd have to think that wouldn't she want them to be together and wouldn't she be influencing that? And that's not what's happening. There's a life's path there that has to play out. And um, so that's where we're at with that. But let's draw uh, a couple of cards for, and remember I've got those two cards that we drew for Queen Elizabeth right there. So let's reintroduce those into the deck. They're not upside down. And, um, and see if what two cards come up for Diana. What of these two kind of oracle cards can put us into the mood or into the uh, uh, space of Diana. Just two of these cards. One, two. Diana. Okay. First card up. Oh my god. Calignesty. 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 Don't have any idea what that means. Uh, I'm going to get the book out in a minute or look it up on my phone, Calignesty. And then the second one of is Quietus. And look at this. This is a rem, is a, reminds me of her being, her, her remains being buried on that lonely uh, island uh, at uh, her family, uh, Althorpe uh, Estate, for some reason. So, and Calignesty, what the heck does that mean? Okay, let's get the um, instruction guide out and see what the instruction is for Calignesty. Uh, this uh, set comes with some extra stuff. Again, if you go to the end of the video, you'll find out all about all that. So Calignesty, Calignesty. 
car assembled. Okay, so it is that. And it's foot number 41. So this is the journey. Kalignaston. What does that sound like? I don't know. Well, you just have to uh, hang in there with me. I'm sorry. Affinity. Come on. Gin. Uh -huh. Historical context. What happens is these cards are broken into uh, several categories um, by this book. Okay, calligraphy. Okay, historical context. The dissolution of the Templars in 1312 did not mark the end of the Templars, trials and tribulations. Uh, so let me think. Okay, let's keep going. Symbolic context. Simple, meaningful card. From right, train from. Oh my goodness, draws and light. Okay. Should have studied this before, huh? Uh, divinatory mating. It's a card of introspection, self-analysis, and withdrawal. Okay. Self-analysis, introspection, and withdrawal. And quietus. Wow, those cards so well complement each other. So Diana, no, she's she is demurring also, but in in a different way. Her cards don't. Um, uh, express the importance of her position and uh, so yeah it's uh, showing us that no this is uh, a person praying here for quiet this is some sort of a focus it's almost like an eye to tell you the truth and uh, this uh, face actually looks like a tiger's or a, yeah a tiger's face or a serpent's face and then over here we have the uh, you know the, almost a holy building or a castle you can think of it as and then quietus again is more self uh, um, more in uh, thinking inside yourself, sorting yourself out. And we see here there's two people who are kind of gra two ghouls who are kind of grabbing on to this to this figure, which I guess this is Diana, and these would be the sons. So that's what happens here is uh, she's there for them. She's there within touch of them. She's there to lend the comfort of her closeness, but she's not there to guide them. She is. Uh, uh, still focused on her own journey, as a matter of fact. So that's interesting. So let's see, what can the cards uh, tell us more specifically about Diana's influence? Looks like none, but if any, on these two, or specifically on Harry. And we'll start again and I'll give you two cards like the other one. It's one, two, three, four, and uh, five, and right on the end, six. So this is Diana. What is her role in this, if any? It looks like it's not, only for comfort. And you do, as a matter of fact, you do get comfort from remembering those people who you love. And that is a comfort in itself. And that may be the extent of what they get from her. So this is a nine of swords. So this is really a nightmare. Uh, and it's a signifier of this uh, reading. So for her, this situation that's going on is very heart uh, breaking. Uh, but sometimes, you know, we have to have a pain uh, to go forward. But for a mother, it, it's heartbreaking. The uh, challenge to that with this two of pentacles is finding the balance between these two boys, finding the balance. Um, finding the balance between which of the two boys needs the help, the boys finding a balance in their lives. And then the, um, the very baseline of this is the four of pentacles, which is just trying to hold on to your value. And I think this is talking about what's happening in those young men's lives. And they're not young men anymore, they're, they're regular uh, bona fide men. But yeah, this they're her young men. And so the basis is all of this is them each trying to hold on to their value. The um, past of this is this fighter, this knight of swords. So it's time for these battles uh, to be in the past. And in the sky of this is this uh, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, that's the five. 
Uh, no, this is a six. This is a six of cups. In the sky, this is remembering how things used to be. So yeah, so this is the idea that uh, of bringing those two back to a kinder uh, time in their personal relationship. So if there's any influence that a mother has, it looks like it's here to help these young men find their balance and their footing. And then in the, the likely outcome of this though, with this five of cups, is in the end having to leave something behind uh, of emotional value to you. And these are her two sons. And some of these chalices are spilled and this, this does break her heart, but uh, it's what has to happen. This can't have happened any other way. This is just how uh, life progresses. And so sometimes those beyond who we hope are guiding us and giving us good luck or, or beneficial, uh, what we think is beneficial to guidance, because we don't know uh, what we're supposed to suffer through to get to uh, a better uh, spiritual place. So yeah, it's hurtful for her to see it. And the most that she can do is to uh, influence uh, some sort of stillness, some sort of retrospection, some sort of quietness uh, in them. Calignancy. Well, I won't forget that definition very soon. So now, put those back. And we'll see what we get for Harry. We should be a whole other uh, kettle of beans, right? That's how I should have set this up from the beginning. Okay, so for Harry, Harry in this, this terrible situation. So, so far, what the uh, wizened uh, spirits uh, have sent us that I've read is uh, the uh, queen mother, the queen saying, look, I'm still on my journey and uh, they are on their journey too. And uh, not much influence from her in that regard. She's done what she could on this earthly plane. And then from Diana, she's still close enough that it is a, a, you know, a wounded heart of a mother who can only, uh, like if your kid's sick, all you can do is hold their hand. So for Harry, Let's see what we get for Harry. We're gonna do two cards. Wow. For Harry. One. Two cards for Harry. Okay, where are we? Okay, this is a pilgrimage. Well, it's a journey. And, uh, oh, look at that. I mean, that is, is odd to get such... Wow. So it just verifies uh, everything I was talking about. That's pretty uh, interesting. Okay, so yeah, it's part of his journey and uh, it's hell. Okay. This kind of fits in with the reading on the Royal Brothers. If you hadn't seen that, uh, take a look at that because it goes back, we talk about the um, problems that brothers have had through the ages, uh, in, uh, Royal Brothers. So uh, six cards for Harry. Okay, so we got one. To, you know, and this is in relation to his relationship with his father and his brother. I think that's five. What do I have here? One, two, three, four, five, and six. So Harry, what can the cards tell us about Harry, this relationship with his brother? And even though it's what it is, it's still a relationship. That still qualifies as a relationship. Signifier card is the Ten of um, Wands. Wands are actions, plans, forward movement. And the Ten of Wands is a heavy load to bear. But we look, we've got this angelic presence carrying, you know, gripping that bundle. Okay, so it's, it's the signifier is that there's a lot, uh, there's a load here. Um, the challenge to it is his father, the King of Pentacles. The challenge to this is his own father's shortcomings, really. And the basis of this is this page of pentacles, I guess it is. Yeah. So this is a, a, the seal on this envelope is a pentacle. And usually in an envelope is a message or some wisdom. And he is holding, uh, looks like a book of wisdom here. So the basis of all of this is receiving the message, receiving this valuable message by who, by his father. Someone say he needs to get the message from his father, but this message seems vengeful. 
and the message that uh, here seems help me. In the past of this is this four of cups and being offered something that you just don't want. This is Harry. He doesn't want the limited emotional support that's coming through. And in the sky of this is this 10 of swords, which is the definite um, end of, of a cycle. Just this a winged, winged or winged animal here, uh, or angel, is just stabbed by all these swords. And so in the sky of this, the best that he can hope for is to be damaged by this, is to be, and it's the end of that relationship. So for whatever reason, this is how, um, for whatever cosmic reason, if you want to say, this is how this relationships or these relationships have to be. And the likely outcome for all of this, again, is this five of pentacles and uh, that's being left out in the cold. That is his fate to be left out of this family. And uh, there's nothing he can do to change that uh, journey. Hey, I'm going to show you the cards now. Hang on a minute. Okay, so these are Templar Tarot The Journey. Cool cards. They've got an interesting packaging, but I'm not a big fan of it, and you'll know why in a second. So this is a sleeve that covers the main box, and I guess it's meant to look like a book. This looks like the spine of the book, maybe the front of the book, maybe the back of the book, and maybe the pages inside of a book. Beautiful and in decent quality, but when it's new and you're trying to get this apart, you see I've left it a little open so I can get in here. When it's pressed together, it is hard to get this apart because this is so packed with good stuff. Uh, and it's a shame that the good stuff that's in there uh, has that stigma of being in this box. You can see here that I actually tore the box when I first opened it when it was new trying to get stuff out. Okay, now the, the um, booklet. Beautiful booklet, uh, got lots of good ideas for divination in here. It's got some good depictions of the cards in here. And um, so it's a great book. It's a lot of good information inside. When you open it up, the first few pages, you can see they've not spared any expense to make this seem like quality. So if you gave this as a gift, I mean, this really redeems it from being hard to get out of the box. The plus that you get with this are these extra cards uh, right here. Uh, and what I mean by extra cards, this is like a gift. The first thing you have is a um, gift card. I mean, you could fill this out and send it to someone as a, as a gift card for some special occasion. So nice that you get that. Then you have actually uh, postcards uh, here. So you got a place for a stamp, you can fill it in. And then the cards, this is a good example of the art that's inside that box. So this is the kind of thing you're gonna see when you get into the box. And these may even be some of the depictions inside there on the cards. I haven't double, double checked to make sure, but so you get these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven postcards and one gift card. So all nice. Now uh, you're gonna see what's actually inside the uh, cards themselves. Where can I put this? Let's put it right there. So. The other problem I have with this deck is you have to dump the cards out to get them. And I never liked that. How hard would it have been to include a string that kind of pulls them up? It wouldn't have been hard at all. But the first thing I'm going to show you is that you've got the extra cards. So there's the, right here in this box at this very moment is the full set of tarot cards. Major Arcana, the Pip cards, everything. So you can do a reading right now with those cards. These are extra. So these are called uh, the journey, and included in these cards are, you know, are a few of these cards are for birth, a few of these cards are for life, and a few of these cards are for death. And so, th and this is not specifically in this order. I'm just making an example here. So these cards are called the journey of birth, life, and death. And then, how do they look? Actually, well, they're beautiful. And so you could use these as oracle cards. You could replace the major arcana, take the major arcana out, and put these cards in. You'd have a couple of extra cards though, because there's 23 of these. Um, but you can see that they're beautiful cards. They've got interesting um, uh, titles on them for divination. And so there you go. So yeah, how you would use these cards is completely up to you. You can even just mix them in with the regular tarot deck and just have these extra uh, cards that you, that you use. Okay, now the regular tarot cards. So here they are. They've got a good uh, quality, a nice weight to them. They're beautiful cards. These are still new, so they're kind of sticking together. You know how they do before you get a lot of air between the cards. But the uh, thing about these, and they use the very clear Rider weight um, iconography, uh, of course, in the style of uh, Templar uh, art. And you can see here, like, this is the One of Pentacles, very clear. Uh, this is the Ten of Cups, very clear. This is the King of uh, Wands. So they're easy. These are the lovers. 
It says it right here, and this is number six of the Major Arcana. So they're very easy to use uh, for divination. So I like the cards. I haven't really used them yet. I'll probably use them for the first time, um, maybe today or tomorrow. On oh, I don't want to mix these up, and um, and see how all that goes. So here we go. You've got them. You saw them here first. The Templar Tarot, the Journey. So very interesting, and uh, I think they're great.